Mics are on. Good evening. I call the meeting to the City Council to order for today, May 13, 2017. 2019, I'm sorry. Please rise and, sit and salute the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, counselors, I hope uh, for all the moms in the, uh, in the room, you had a wonderful uh, Mother's Day yesterday. And welcome to the uh, City Council meeting for today, May 13, 2019. We're not in 2017 for some other reason, <laughs> so we're in 2019. Uh, Mr. Clark, agenda we, number one, please. We have acceptance of the minutes of April 22nd, 2019 City Council meeting. That will be accepted and placed on fire. We have the hearings. Petition of Irving Oil Marketing, Inc., Lee C., of 190 Columbus Way, Fort Smith, New Hampshire, 03801, for an underground storage license located at 683-685 and 697 Pleasant Street, Brockton. Owner of land is Brockton at 683 Pleasant, LLC. Uh, care of John R. Salvatore. Mr. Mr. President, yes. before you open the hearing, I, I, I make a motion that we postpone this to a little later in the meeting. I just wanted to meet with the attorney for the uh, before the hearing and the neighbors. Second. Motion has been properly made and properly seconded. All those in favor, postpone it. Thank you. We shall do that. Counts uh, number three. Three, please. Petition of Mohammed A. Pawaz of 112 Matfield Street, Bridgewater, for a transfer of garage, garage license located at 383 Warren Avenue, Brockton, Mass. This is by George uh, Cowan. The time having arrived, I declare this uh, hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor of this petitioner? If so, please give your name to the clerk. Sir? Well, I'm the petitioner. Obviously, State I'm your in name favor, Mohammed Parwaz. And you're here? I'm here for the transfer of the motor vehicle license, for the uh, permission to uh, I bought the building from uh, Collins Taxi, and I'd like to have the license transferred over to 383 Warren Avenue. No, Same building, I yeah. I knew that there was another attachment. Uh, Councillor Monaghan. Uh, yes, um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I talked to uh, Mr. Powers earlier. This is just a transfer of ownership from uh, one to another. Same stipulations as before. Well, thank you. Um, thank you. I close that portion of the hearing. Uh, is there anybody here in opposition? No, I'm not in opposition. I have a question. Oh, you have a question? Well, let me close this one, this portion out, and then we can open it up for questions. Anyone here in opposition? I declare that portion closed. Uh, go ahead, Councilor. Thank you. Good evening. I just wanted to ask, what are the current stipulations? I think the stipulations go on the mechanical, what? not the garage, right? This is a gr the garage. There's no stipulation the for the garage. So there's right. no stipulation? No, no. It will be on the, on the mechanical. Okay, we'll wait repair. for the next one. Then you get it. Okay, thank yes. you. Any, anything else? The question is on granting by a hand vote. All those in favor of granting? All those opposed? Transfer is granted. Transfer is granted. We have the petition of Mohammed A. Parwas of 112 Matfield Street, West Bridgewater, <coughs> doing business as Felix Auto Repair for a transfer of motor vehicle repair mechanical license located at 383 Warren Avenue. And that is from George Cowan, DBA, Cowan Taxi. Time having arrived, I declare this uh, hearing open. Is there someone here in favor of this petitioner? If so, please give your name to the clerk. Yes, Mohammed Parvaz. I'm in favor of uh, transferring the license for motor vehicle repair to 383 Warren Avenue. Uh, Council Moynihan? Yes, uh, we went over the stipulations. Um, Monday, hours of operations are going to be Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. No holiday or Sundays. Eight car storage inside, no, no storage outside overnight. Uh, I think that's about it. You said eight cars outside. Agreed. No storage outside. Right. But eight cars storage inside. Okay. Overnight. Is there, is there anyone else in favor of this petitioner? Hearing none, I close that portion. Is there anyone in the op in opposition? Madam uh, City Council, did you? I'm not. Did you get that? 
Is there anyone in opposition? Hearing none, I declare that portion closed. And the question is on granting by a hand vote. All those in favor of granting? All those opposed? Which uh, the license is granted with stipulation. Yeah. Number. We have the petition of Mass Electric Company of Verizon New England Inc. requesting permission to relocate poles, wires, cables, and fixtures, including anchors, guys, and other such necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures along and across the following public way or ways. Bassett Road, pole number six, National Grid requests to relocate pole six, nine feet north of the existing location in order to uh, relocate pole out of city's culvert. Time having arrived, I declare this uh, hearing open. Is there anyone here in, in favor of this petition? If so, please give your name to the clerk and tell us what Hi. you're gonna do. Hi, my name is Simon Young. I'm a National Grid Engineer. Uh, just as stated, we are just moving a simple job. The pole was probably placed long ago. It's currently in uh, the city's culvert. I think it's the city's request to kind of move it nine feet uh, sideways along along the existing pole line. Councils, is there any questions? I declare that portion. Is there anyone here in opposition of this petition? Anyone in opposition? I declare that closed as well, and we will vote on this at the end of the meeting, right? Right. Thank you, sir. Number six, sir. We're going on. Report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of May 6, 2019. That's accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor submitting a grant of easement to National Grid for the installation of underground electric facilities upon the property reference 331 Oak Street of Col Calanther Avenue. That too will be accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too shall be accepted and placed on file. Okay, we have a, uh, I'm sorry, yes. Well, we we'll got strike, a little ahead strike or so. that, that we're going on to number eight. Number eight, I'm sorry. sorry. From the mayor, in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending that the city council authorize the payment of $21,739.08 from finance purchase of services to Nugent Capital for the billing period of December 2016 through January 2017. The city of Brockton was not charged for the national grid credits that we received during this billing cycle. An annual audit from Nugent Capital was done and due to staffing changes within the company, the bill was never generated. That will be accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. That too shall be accepted and placed on file. Communication from the city auditor certifying the balance and account Comcast Cable Revolving Fund as of May 3rd, 2019 is $642,000. Seven hundred and thirty-five dollars and forty cents. That will be accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor in accordance with the provisions and stipulations of section fifty-three E and one half of chapter forty-four of the National Laws, recommending that the city council reauthorize Comcast revolving fund for fiscal year twenty twenty from all cash receipts, Comcast franchise fees in excess of six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars pursuant to the cable license contract, and that further, that the expenditures for this fund shall not exceed $750,000 without further appropriation during fiscal 2020. That will be accepted and placed on file. a communication from the CFO relative to the same. That too shall be accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the city auditor certifying as of May 3rd, 2019, the balance of the vacant and abandoned building revolving fund is $1,522,330.17. That will be accepted and placed on file. Communication from the superintendent of buildings requesting that the city council reauthorize the revolving funds for the fiscal 2020 vacant and abandoned building account. That will be accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too shall be accepted and placed on file. Communica communication from the CFO relative to the same. And accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the city auditor certifying as of May 3rd, 2019, the balance of the demolition revolving fund is $166,675.63. 
that too will be accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the superintendent of buildings requesting that the city council authorize the revolving funds for fiscal 2020 revolving demolition account. That will be accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. And a communication from the CFO relative to the same. That too shall be accepted and placed on we file. We have a communication from the city auditor certifying as of May 3rd, 2019, the balance of account 18A parking meter fee reserve is $716,112.13. And 18B parking authority reserve, $575,006.96. That will be accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the executive director of parking authority requesting a renewal parking authority revolving fund for fiscal 2020 of the revolving fund for revenues from parking re uh, violation fines up to and including in the amount of $250,000 in order to pay expenses of authorities parking enforcement program for fiscal 2020. That will be accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too shall be accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the city auditor certifying that the balance of the stabilization fund as of May 6, 2019 is $4,347,093.49. That will be accepted and placed on file. Communication from the superintendent of schools requesting a supplemental appropriation to the school department's fiscal 2019 non-net school spending budget in the amount of $660,000. This transfer is necessary to cover transportation through the end of the school year. That will be accepted and placed on file. Yeah, communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too shall be accepted and placed on yeah, file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the building superintendent requesting the city council authorizes the total appropriation of $20,000 from public property purchase of services to public property overtime. This transfer is necessary to cover overtime until the end of the fiscal year. That will be accepted and placed on file. A communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too shall be accepted and placed on a file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws and the ordinances of the City of Brockton recommending that the City Council adopt the fiscal year 2020 budget for the city in the amount and form as recommended in the budget order. He recommends appropriations in the amount of $450,712,073. That will be accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO <coughs> relative to the same reference communication sent to you on the budget from the CFO. That will be accepted and placed on file. We have a total appropriation of $250,000 from DPW snow removal to planning and economic development, $250,000. In council, April 22nd, 2019, Reading referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was unfavorable. Uh, Councilor Fowler. Mr. President, <clears throat> pardon me. As you may remember, this came before the Finance Committee last Monday. And there were quite a few questions asked. Uh, Mr. May, the Director of Planning and Economic Development, was here. Among the questions that were asked oh, was what parcel of land would be evaluated for a potential public safety campus and how much would the project cost? And we did not receive that information. <clears throat> Subsequent to that meeting, on the 9th of this month, an email went out from Mr. May to the City Council, and now it appears that the quarter of a million dollars that's requested for a feasibility study is a mere down payment on what is now an estimated cost of $793,000 for a feasibility study. And the estimated cost of the entire project, if, we're, if it were to go forward, and if it were to be carried through to its uh, completion, would be $85,300,000. Now, no one here knows whether we will ever own the property that's being examined for this potential public safety campus. It's the CSX property, the old railroad yard, and some other uh, 
contiguous property that apparently is owned by Brockton Iron and Steel. We're, we're being asked to authorize funds to do a feasibility and study, feasibility study on land that we don't own and we don't control. I know of no purchase and sale agreement that's pending for us to buy this property, and I know of no authorization from the City Council to borrow and pay for this property. And if we were going to do an $85 million project, my first choice would be the schools. We know the schools need help. They need a STEM, a science, technology, engineering, and mathematics center up at the high school. And the reason I would recommend the schools is that we're eligible for 80% reimbursement from SBAB. That's a good investment if you can get 80, 80, 80 cents back on the dollar. <clears throat> so for a number of different reasons, we don't own the property. We don't know if we ever will. We don't even know if we have the bonding capacity for 85 million. I don't disagree that we knew, need a new police station, and if we can combine it with a fire station, that's fine. But this is just pie in the sky. We have streets that have to be done. We have probably a couple of million dollars worth of work that needs to be done up at the Rock Center, at the Shaw Center and the Rock Stadium. And for a number of different reasons, <clears throat> this just is not the proper direction for us to go. Now, the other thing I find unacceptable, and I hope the rest of you do too, is when someone from the administration comes in here, and they have the information, because two days later or three days later it came out in an email, to stand there and not ask to be recognized and to provide us with the information we need to make an intelligent decision, that is unacceptable. And I'm not happy about it. It shouldn't happen. That's a breakdown of professional and political courtesy. So I urge my colleagues not to approve this. And I would also urge us to work with the school department, work with other city departments, and address the priorities that are really needed in this city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> uh, Council Borgar. Thank you, Mr. President, <laughs> sir. Again, I would follow with my colleague. <laughs> I urge everyone to vote no this evening. I myself <laughs> went forward and asked a private printer to print out the entire report over 500 pages. I have read over two-thirds of it. Uh, what is alarming about a lot of this is the Mass Municipal you know, so School Facility Study and Master Plan is in areas that they, they present here. We've mostly focused <coughs> on the public safety. They recommend in a variety of different um, departments, certainly the needs for our buildings to uh, be renovated, rehabilitated, and meet the current needs of the 21st century. And in some instances, some of these buildings have been designated as historic sites, and there's no reference to seeking grants that address historic buildings. There, in, in several instances, there's absolutely no mention of speaking with the individual that oversees all of the buildings, and that would be the, the director and, uh, what I say, the commissioner of buildings for the city of Brockton. And I find that quite I, off. I mean, just, you know, here's a gentleman that has been worked, working for the city for several years and is qualified in all capacities, and at no time in all that I've read ha has there been a reference to having any conversation with him or having him review any of this. I mean, I've highlighted many things, and this is only part of it, but I mean, I, I will cite um, an example. They, they refer to one of the buildings of a library needing some renovations and repairs. At the same time, currently, some of those are taking place without taxpayer money. And that is an example here. I just, something's missing. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Monaghan. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> seeing as all these concerns about this uh, $250,000 and uh, what's going on with it, I'd like to make a motion to send it back to finance. Second. 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 A motion has been on the motion? Yes. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, um, Mr. President. Um, I did take some time to actually spoke with a few folks regarding this, uh, although I strongly believe that uh, we are in desperation of having a new uh, police uh, department, but I strongly disagree with how this come out, given the fact that when you have a 500 pages documents, and for those of you, obviously, 
that do have a job. It requires sometimes to actually act, sit down and hear. So I, so, so, so I can completely agree with my colleague, Council Farrell, to not to support this, not against the police department or the fire department, but I do believe that we need more information because um, to spend $250,000 to do a study will require me to actually take some time to read this document and find out exactly what's going on. But I feel like one of the biggest problems that I've been having is the fact that there's a lack of sharing of information. So when you have a 500 pages document, I want you folks to understand that. This is not against uh, the Brockton Police Department or the Fire Department. It's all about being able to do the reading that requires in order for us to vote. We are taking our taxpayers' money to do something that we must do, but at the same time, we gotta be able to have the time. So I would be more than happy to support anything, but based on how this come along and according to the information that they were providing us, I don't feel comfortable supporting this. So from that one, although we just make a motion to send it back to finance, I was going to vote against it. So I understand that we do need to find a better place to put the Brockton Police Department and also the Fire Department. And one of the things that I would like you folks to understand is that I am 100% against putting the Fire Department and the Police Department at the same location. This is not a good public safety strategy. I spoke with folks in Washington, D.C. that claim that, what if something happened? What if something happened at the same location? What are we gonna do? Because the thing is that we never know. So although I think it's an excellent idea in regard to doing this study, but let's face it, we don't even own this land. This is just a study. And the question is, how long it's gonna take? Where are we gonna spend the money? And who's gonna be in charge of it? These are some very important questions. So given the situation that we are dealing with, I believe that we should focus on invest more into our school system, invest more on our street, we're building them. I'm not saying we shouldn't invest money into finding a location that we can, we can actually okay. have an excellent headquarter for our police department, but why can't we focus on education right now? Why can't we focus on building our street? This evening, I got calls from a few folks who are very angry about their street that are not being paid because they don't understand the complexity and the process of paving the street. They believe that I can just make one phone call and the next day, their street will be paved. I think as we speak, we are at a crossroad where we have to do what we think is best for all of us, but at the same time, we have to do it accordingly. That 500 pages document, to be honest with you, I'm not even in four pages yet because it's a lot of information to process. So given the situation that we are dealing with and according to the amount of money that we have, I don't feel comfortable supporting something like this. I'm not saying this in regard to the Brockton Police Department or the Fire Department. I myself have been saying since 2017, I believe we should have a location where our policemen and women can actually sit down and do their job accordingly. But at the same time, we have to be smart about how we go about it because it's okay to come up with an idea, but the question is how you're gonna go about it and who's gonna be in charge of it and who's gonna spend that money. For some of you, $250,000 may not be a lot, but for me, I think it's a lot of taxpayers' money. We have to be wise in regard to how we spend that. So let's be wise and of course, I am 100% supporting this and of course, following what Council Farrell said, let's invest into our education and also fixing our street. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Uh, Council Sullivan. Could I respectfully ask that you as president get a written letter from the solicitor's office relative to what Mr. Farwell said. The CSX is not owned or controlled by the city of Brock and I'd like to get his opinion and then we can share that with our legal counsel how we could be doing our due diligence uh, relative to that property that we don't own. I'd like to see that, thank you. Will do, sir. Uh, Council Fowell, you were on the motion, you wanted to say something? Just on this motion, I, ordinarily I have no problem studying something, but again, we, we don't own the property. The 85 million is completely unrealistic, and I don't mind spending time on issues that I think have a reasonable likelihood of success, but I just don't see it, folks. If, you know, if, it, if it's the will of this body to do that, so be it. But I really think we need to move on to the issues that are really pressing the budget and some other things in the city, and especially working with the schools on their school building needs. Thank you. <coughs> Councilor Cruz. Thank you. On the motion, uh, just um, I, I'm glad the Councilor Fowell knows what uh, has a good chance of moving forward and what doesn't. I guess, I guess the rest of our votes don't count. But uh, I think there are some valid questions and public works uh, jobs very often in the history of this country move forward uh, on pieces, looking at pieces of property. We have, didn't own where most of the schools were built when they were starting to be planned. 
eminent domain is something that the government uses to take pieces of property when needed. And uh, I, at least five of the schools that have been built in the city in the last 50 years, the city did not own the property when the process started. That happens all the time. It's actually the way most of, in a city that's so tightly landlocked as Brockton, the way that mostly uh, things like this happen. So I think there are valid questions. I would like to send it back to finance so we can discuss this. I, evidently there are some people who don't think that, that before we have our police officers out in a tent, I'd like to at least be looking at this, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Council Ladley followed by your mirror. Thank you. No, I was gonna just, you know, say we should vote, but I'll step back if Council Ladley wants to vote. <clears throat> thank, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. President and members of the, uh, the council. I, I too sort of take the same stand that uh, uh, the council from Ward 1 has taken, and I was uh, one of the ones last week that did vote for the $250,000 to be expended, but um, as, as all of us, and uh, as we all know, that once we sit down and, and have a rethought of, of what the situation is, and then I saw the same information that everybody else received in an email, there's no doubt that I, I do have some other questions and concerns in regards <clears throat> to it. As far as a 500 page report, nobody in their right mind reads a 500 page report. Do they, Attorney McCluskey? I don't know, I, I don't think. <laughs> Usually it's a synopsis anyways, right? But I, I've never read one and believe me, I received them many years ago even from the school department and, and things that we used to do and, and um, Council Fowler will attest to that as well, but um, you know, I, I don't believe in a 500 page report. It's just, um, it's, it's just language, that's all it is. But I think with this money here, I think there are some other questions that need to be answered. And if anybody um, knows, I mean, I'm, I'm for the school department, for the educational you know, system of, of, for the city, for our children, and do anything to um, make sure that their buildings are in, in compliance and, and that the programs are complete for them. Um, we're already giving them some other money to do some things that need to be done with technology. So, um, and I understand they, they need more things, but I also agree with Councilor Cruz and others. We also need to have a new police department and, and, and a new fire station. Um, it's embarrassing when people come into the city to see what we have. So I just wanna learn a little bit more uh, with it. So I'm, I'm supporting it to go back to the um, finance committee for those uh, concerns I have, thank you. Mr. President, I'm gonna call the vote. There's a motion that was properly seconded. Uh, vote has been uh, properly called. Uh, and the motion is to send this item back to FinCom. All those in favor of sending it back to FinCom? All those opposed? To FinCom it shall go. Number 35. We have a total appropriation of $515,000 from DPW snow removal to school department tech hardware. In council, April 22nd, 2019. Ready to refer to standing committee on finance. That report was favorable. And the question is on adoption by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Asak? Yes. Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Neary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Castro? Yes. <coughs> Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative? The appropriation is adopted. Mr. President? Council Cruz. At this time, and I appreciate the uh, patience at the beginning of the meeting, I'd make a motion that we move back to item number two. Second. Second. Motion has been properly seconded. President, Order. prior to that, though, on, on that number that we just voted on, I'd like to make a motion for reconsideration. Second. Of second. Bail. A motion for reconsideration has been properly made and properly <coughs> seconded. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? Thank you, Mr. President. It carries. Every time. Do this all the time, guys. Go ahead. Uh, number <coughs> two. That's number two. Can you read that again so that we have it? We want to read again? Yeah, please. We have a petition of Irving Oil Marketing Inc. Lease of 190 Cormus Way, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, for an underground storage license located at 683 685 and 697 Pleasant Street, Brockton. Owner of land is Brockton, 683 Pleasant, LLC, care of John R. Salvatore. Okay. Time having arrived, I declare that. This hearing open. Oh, Is there anyone here in favor of? Oh, if so, please give your name to the clerk. Shall I speak? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the 
uh, Council, uh, Attorney John McCleskey representing Irving Oil Marketing. Uh, we've been working on this project for well over a couple of years, uh, gone to every committee in the, in the city, and this is pretty much one of our last stops. Um, we have a um, uh, authority from the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board to uh, create a uh, convenience store with uh, several gas, state gas uh, pumps here, uh, perfect uh, access to the highway, and uh, we're seeking your support this evening for the underground storage license previously submitted to the um, uh, clerk's office, uh, reviewed by the fire department. I believe there's a letter in the fire department uh, approving or, or recommending approval of this uh, request. Are there any questions? Uh, Council Cruz. Just on this, I just want to let uh, the public know and the councilors, this is the old Central Music property mm -hmm. up across from the mall. Uh, again, it has gone through everything and we've had negotiations with St. Paul's Church and we did have the reason I postponed tonight, there were a couple of concerns from a couple of neighbors that we've taken care of that uh, we had taken care of prior, but it's been quite a while since we started this and my memory didn't, I couldn't quite remember what we've had in there. So I just want to say I am in favor of this and we'll be, it should be breaking ground fairly soon, I believe, correct? Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. President. Uh, is there anyone else here in favor of this petition? Anyone else? Hearing none, I close that portion. Is anybody here in opposition to this hearing? In opposition? Please approach the mic and give the clerk your name, please. Uh, my name is Janish Patel. Uh, my family owns and operates uh, Premier Farms, the gas station across the street at <laughs> 660 Pleasant Street in Brockton. Um, so I, I don't know a lot about this project, but I've been to zoning hearings and stuff, and I did not know that uh, it was approved by zoning, and I thought the curb cuts, but the state, but my only concern <coughs> is, I don't know if, if, if it's all set, what are we gonna do about traffic? It, obviously, I didn't go to the last hearing, but is there something we're addressing for traffic? And that's about it. I mean, I'd just like you guys to, before you approve this, just make sure the traffic situation down there gets resolved because it is a very horrible intersection and to add more traffic down there, it's just food for thought and just give it a second thought before you approve it. And Council, do you have anything you wanna add on that? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President of the Council. Uh, this sure. gentleman actually came before the Zoning Board of Appeals with the same argument uh, two years ago. Uh, the board considered it uh, and approved the um, uh, project. Uh, by that time, we had already been to the Traffic Commission, uh, and uh, John Holmgren, the engineer, has been working with uh, Mass uh, Department of Transportation on the reconfiguration of this property. There's been thousands of hours and thousands of uh, dollars uh, put into uh, making this work. And uh, uh, actually, quite frankly, the, we're, we're here this evening for a tank permit and <coughs> uh, hopefully not to review the traffic issues that have been fully vetted by planning board, tech review, zoning board, uh, the land court actually, um, because the one butter appealed this gentleman did not appeal the case, uh, and that case was settled with the church, and um, it's really been fully vetted, uh, and it's time to move on. Thank you. Is there anyone else in opposition to this uh, matter? Hearing none, that portion is closed. Uh, the question is on granting by uh, a hand vote. All those in favor of granting? All those opposed? It's granted. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we continue on to number 36? Mm -hmm. Order that the Brockton City Council, acting on behalf of the City of Brockton, does hereby grant a perpetual right and easement to Mass Electric Company, said land being located as Lot 44 on City of Brockton Assessor's Map, number 32, 331 Oak Street off Calantha Avenue. The order will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Order that the Brockton City Council, acting on behalf of the City of Brockton, does hereby grant an easement to Mass Electric Company, said underground system, is located in, through, under, and over, across, 
upon a certain parcel of land situated on the easterly side of L Street be more particularly shown as parcel A, 11,003 square feet, on a plan of land recorded with the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds in Plan Book 23, page 38, 121 Main Street and 28 High Street. The order will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Ordered that pursuant to the Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half, the City Council authorizes the reauthorization of Comcast Revolving Fund for fiscal year 2020 from cash receipts from Com Comcast franchise fees in excess of $675,000 pursuant to the cable license contract and further that the expenditures from this fund shall not exceed $750,000 without further appropriation during fiscal 2020. This too shall be referred to the Committee on Finance. Ordered that pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half, the City Council authorizes the reauthorization of the vacant and abandoned buildings revolving fund for the purpose of maintaining the abandoned building registry as well as the closing, boarding up, and care of vacant and abandoned buildings. Expenditures from the vacant and abandoned buildings revolving fund shall be made on the authority and direction of the Brockton Building Commissioner, provided that no more than $250,000 may be so expended without further appropriation from the vacant and abandoned building revolving fund during fiscal 20. That too shall be referred to the Committee on Finance. Ordered that pursuant to the Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half, the City Council authorizes the reauthorization of the Demolition Revolving Fund for Fiscal 2020 for the sole purpose of helping to fund the cost in connection with the demolition of buildings in the City of Brockton. Expenditures from the Demolition Revolving Fund shall be made at the direction of the Building Superintendent with the written approval of the mayor, provided that no more than $110,000 may be so expended from the demolition revolving fund during fiscal 2020. That too will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Ordered that pursuant to the Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half, the City Council authorizes the reauthorization of the Parking Authority Revolving Fund to receive revenues from parking violation fines up to and including the amount of $250,000. Said funds to be expended by the Parking Authority to pay expenses of parking regulation enforcement and repair and maintenance of lots, facilities, equipment, and capital projects. But expenditures for capital projects shall require the written approval both of the Parking Authority, Board of Directors, and the Mayor for the fiscal year 2020. Amounts in excess of $250,000 shall be credited to the general fund. That too will be referred to the Committee on Finance. I have an order that the annual budget of fiscal 20. Referred to the Committee on Finance. We have a total appropriation of $660,000 from the stabilization fund to non-net school spending. Refer to the Committee on Finance. We have a total appropriation of $20,000 from public property purchase of services to public property overtime. That too shall be referred to the Committee on Finance. We have the approval of the payment of $21,739.08 from the finance purchase of services to Nugent Capital for the billing period of December 2016 through January 2017 referred to the Committee on Finance. In compliance with the provisions of the election laws, notice is hereby given that the city preliminary will be held on Tuesday, September 17, 2019, and that the city election, election will be held on Tuesday, November 5, 2019, at various designated polling places. Uh, that too will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Resolved that the Superintendent of Schools and such other staff as she may designate be invited to the a Finance Committee meeting in May 2019 to provide an updated overview of funding, staffing, and educational equity issues for Brockton school population. That too will be referred to the Committee Here, on Finance. As you receive, you have 47A. Mm -hmm. Uh, however, was an oversight by the clerk's office, but was registered in the clerk's office 
uh, prior to the deadline time. Pursuant to Article 2, Section 2-93 of the revised auditors of the City of Brockton, it is referred to the Audits Committee the responsibility to undertake a review of the current salary for all positions governed by the auditors of the City, as well as the proposed creation of any new position. Provided further, the Audits Committee shall present any recommended amendments to the audits governing positions and salary levels to the City Council for review and approval. Relative to salaries of Director of Human Resources and the creation of the position of Assistant Director of Human Resources. Uh, Councilors, we have the option on this particular item to either send it to Finance and Ordinance or just to Ordinance. And I believe since we're talking about an ordinance, it perhaps should go to Ordinance and we're all invited to show up and participate in Ordinance. Council Cruz? Actually, I'm not sure that it should. Um, it's not proposing an ordinance. Uh, may, perhaps our clerk can give us a little guidance on this. I read this earlier, and the idea behind it I understand, but it's not proposing an ordinance, so I don't believe. It's proposing for us to give a study of those salaries, and for us to do the study, I would think we're going to have to rely on uh, our auditor, and so I would think we need to send it to finance because no, I think it go to finance. we as councilors on the ordinance committee don't have the ability to do the, the study, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just, uh, the idea behind it I understand. I'm not sure that the ordinance committee really has the wherewithal to do it and it's also not proposing a, an ordinance. Am I, am I misunderstanding it? Well, it's the creation of another position through ordinance. That's the assistant director. It can always go to audits and then you could refer it to yes. finance. To, uh, so it is, so one part is actually creating the position. It is the creating. rest of it is asking for a study that, and that perhaps that, that should be separated. That will be an audits position though. That is not a union position. Yeah, union. So Correct. Position. I guess we should send it to ordinance and we may have to send part of it back to finance. Well, the uh, study part is what I'm con confused about. Just, just, just if Go I ahead, could, <clears throat> since I submitted this. Yeah. The intent of this is to really do what we did back in 2017, and that's we looked at all of the ordinance positions and they were adjusted, the, the salaries were adjusted. Now, since the human resources director wants her salary schedule adjusted, what, this, the, what the intent of this is is to have the five of us on the ordinance committee get together, look at all of the ordinance salaries. Should they be adjusted, and if so, in what manner or should they remain the way they are and then come back to the full council with a recommended ordinance. It, it, much like legislative committees conduct studies on various issues and then they turn around and they write legislation or they proceed further with what they think is appropriate or they don't take any action at all. Yeah. But I, I just felt that in FinCom with 11 people um, it might be unmanageable to yeah. to sit down with some people and go over the facts and figures. Yeah, I guess the first part has to come to ordinance anyway. So, correct. Right. So that's why I think we can uh, we can send it to ordinance, and then if it needs to come back to finance, we'll send it back to finance. Okay. So it's referred to ordinance. We have a granting of Mass Electric Company of Verizon New England Inc. permission to relocate poles, wires, cables, and fixtures, including anchors, guys, and other such necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures along and across the following public way, all ways, Bassett Road, Pole 6. The question is on granting by uh, a hand vote. All those in favor of granting? All those opposed? It is granted. All items of the agenda are available in their entirety for review in the city clerk's office for all interested parties. Uh, Councilors, that's the end of the President, agenda. Just, just, if, if I could, I believe the clerk has a late file that came over from the police department. Yes, we do. Oh, yes, and the shops and chains. Yeah. Uh, before we go into the uh, most uh, moments of personal privilege, we're going to do the, uh, the late file. Go ahead, Mr. President. I'd like to move that we accept the late file. Second. Second. All those in favor of accepting a late file? All those opposed? It shall be accepted. We have a communication from the Chief of Police Department requesting the authorization to expend additional grant monies in the amount of $12,293 related to the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Office of Grants and Research Highway Division, 
fiscal 2019 sustained traffic enforcement step grant program. That communication is accepted and placed on file. Do you want to move to the further to the audit? Council, is, if I could, given the fact this is for 2019, I'd like to move suspension of the rules and act on that this evening. Second. Second. Motion has been properly made and properly second. All those in favor of suspending the rules? All those opposed? Please read the orders. Ordered that acceptance and expenditures of the total grant award in the amount of $12,293 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Office of Grants and Research Highway Safety Division Fiscal 2019 Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program Step Grant to City of Brockton Police Department Fiscal 2019 Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program Step Grant Fund. The question, please. Next one acted on it. Okay. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam uh, Clerk, please call the roll. Asak? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative? The order is Mr. President, I move reconsideration. Second. I hope that it does not prevail. Motion for reconsideration. Hopes that it does not prevail has been made. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? No reconsideration. At least it's not reconciliation anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, Councilor Yaneri, followed by Nikashi. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just a moment of personal privilege, and I won't, uh, I won't take that long. First off, I just want to um, make uh, an announcement that I will be holding a, a Ward 3 meeting It'll be Wednesday evening, May the 29th, at the Kennedy School from 6.30 to 8 p.m. There'll be various uh, guests that will be present. Again, it'll be Wednesday evening, May 29th, uh, 2019, at the Kennedy School from 6.30 to 8 p.m. The second thing I just want to uh, mention, um, counselors, to you is um, during the, uh, uh, the end of my um, president's term, um, there was a day when I had to go over to the deputy superintendent's office and, and have a meeting with uh, Mike Thomas. And when I was there, I have an awful habit of snooping around. And um, when I did, I happened to look in, at the, uh, in the main corridor. And um, as you know, um, on the wall is um, what they call, not what they call, but what we have is the Lewis F. Angelo um, Award. And the Lewis S. Angelo, uh, F., excuse me, award, it was something that was presented in, uh, you know, to different people for various things that they did throughout the community. Um, and it started back in 1997. And for those of you that, that don't know, um, uh, Council, Council Angelo, he was, was uh, a member of this uh, um, council uh, in, in these chambers for, for many years. Um, back in the uh, mid 90s, you'll find his portrait on, uh, in, uh, on the back wall. Um, and then he um, went to the higher level of uh, state representative, um, but only served six months because during those, during those six months, unfortunately, he had um, uh, a bout with cancer and then passed away in 1995. So what the school committee did was create this award called the Louis F. Angelo Award. But in, in any case, what my point is, is when I looked up and saw the plaque and saw that um, Nobody had been uh, uh, awarded the award since 2012. I got a little, I got a little concerned, um, and and I did receive it uh, in 2003 before I left across the street and came here. Um, but in my questioning to even uh, Super, uh, Deputy Superintendent Thomas, he uh, said we're trying to put it back into place, and I asked if they would, and I, I wanted to partake, and he said fine. I indicated that. Um, there was somebody that I wanted to nominate um, to be uh, the recipient for 2018, and we thought that we'd do one naturally for 2019. So the gentleman I chose for 2018 was our former Ward 4 City Councilor and Chief of Police, Paul Studinsky. So um, just, to, just to you know, let you know that on Tuesday evening, May 21st, um, at the school committee meeting, he will be receiving the uh, Lewis F. Angelo Award um, for year 2018. Uh, there is a gentleman that they have um, that's gonna uh, receive for 2019, it's Michael uh, Sylvia. 
um, and he owns the J&B Transportation Company, 1987 uh, graduate of Brockton High School. He does an awful lot of donating, an awful lot of work with the um, uh, different groups within within the high school and the school department itself. Um, really, there when he's when they need him and they want to make him the year 2019. But I just want to let you people know that. Um, so if you want to join me on that night, I'll say a few words uh, for our counselor. I did talk to him uh, this afternoon, and uh, he was very very pleased with that. And I thought it was um, the right thing to do. Um, city resident uh, work his life in the in the city of Brockton. He served as our uh, chief of police for, I think it was what, 14 years, Council Fowler, at least 14 years, and, and you had him under under your helm um, and served here as council, but Paul was always the one that was, um, he was out there always working hard, uh, always working for you, um, followed a little bit in the footsteps of uh, his, uh, his father, the former councilor and state representative and former mayor. So anyhow, if you can join me on, on that day next Tuesday, May 21st, it, it would be nice at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. in the uh, ROM Theater uh, with the school committee meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Moment of personal privilege, please. It's official. The second Ward 4 meeting of 2019 will take place Wednesday, May 22nd, from 6.30 until 8 o'clock at the Gilmore Elementary School in the cafeteria. Um, my topic is going to be neighborhoods, roadways, roadways, excuse me, and more. Officer Bill Healy has consented to speak on neighborhoods, crime watch, et cetera, and DPW Superintendent Larry Rowley will be speaking on streets and street improvements. Everyone is welcome to join us, but especially Ward 4 residents. Thank you. Council Lally, actually. Oh. Moment of personal privilege. I uh, just wanted to take a second to wish my sister Grace a very happy <laughs> 16th birthday. Uh, you know, now I don't have to drive her around, so it's a win for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, let me clear up something. I am in my right mind, and so um, if I want to gain knowledge on how we spend taxpayers' hard-earned money, first of all, I'll never apologize, and second of all, there is an awful lot of spending we do, and um, since most of our taxpayers work very hard for all their money, I should say all of them, then uh, there's a reason we should uh, follow up on this. I also want to remind people that the Mass Memories is taking place on Saturday at the Broughton Main Library beginning at 10 a.m. till 3 p.m., and we're really encouraging people to bring their pictures, programs, any kind of souvenir that they, they want, um, how would I say it, to talk about um, in their life in, in Broughton, whether they still live here, whether they've moved, whether they just moved here, and their experiences. Um, also, at that, um, the, earlier that morning, uh, the Garden Club will be doing their annual uh, plant sale at the um, Parks and Rec Department on Meadow, um, Meadowbrook Lane there. And it starts about 8.30. And um, also want to uh, let people know that we will be talking about the budget hearings. I know our president will be bringing that up. And it will be a time that you can actually ask or speak up on uh, how we are spending your hard-earned money. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just want to remind everybody, and I'm sure some of us, uh, a lot of us volunteer, the citywide spelling bee is this coming Saturday. Uh, I have a vested interest because my son, Tommy, is a sixth grade um, uh, winner from Trinity Catholic Academy. So I will not be judging the sixth grade this year, it's the fourth grade. <laughs> but what I also wanted to bring to your attention is it's not at the Little Red Schoolhouse this year. Uh, it's always at the Little Red Schoolhouse. And I inquired why that was, and I was told two reasons. It's going to be at, at, the, at the unknown cafeteria. But I was told, number one, the Little Red Schoolhouse Foundation uh, couldn't fund it this year. But also what troubled me is that the building is deemed unsafe for children. Mm. And as you may recall, last year when Dennis was the president, I, I filed a resolve because mm -hmm. the plaque is not even on there when you drive by a Little Red Schoolhouse anymore. It's been down a year. Um, I spoke to Mayor Carpenter last year and I was told, well, you know, the building department probably can't fix it because it's historical, whatever. At the end of the day, right. you know, we as elected officials have to figure out how we can save that because it's a historic piece of the city of Brockton. I think Mr. Cruz was even a student there many, many years ago. <laughs> Catholic school. Oh yeah, Catholic boy. But but I just I just I want to just share that with you because it was eye-opening to me 
I mean, it's, at the, it's really at the Forest Ave entrance, and we need to make sure that it's saved. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Good luck to all the boys and girls. Sullivan Towers, 140 Annabelle Drive. Everyone is certainly invited. We'll field questions, and we look forward to public attending. Again, that's Wednesday the 15th, 6.30 to 8 at Sullivan Towers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would like to invite uh, all of you folks at home, and also my colleague, to the uh, Haitian Flag Day, uh, May 17th, uh, which I believe is a part of our culture. So it's going to be exactly <coughs> here at City Hall and I believe the time is 9.30 in the morning to 12. I would encourage uh, all of my colleagues to join us as we celebrate a part of our culture. As you know, we usually have like music. Uh, my colleague, uh, Jack Lally, Susan uh, Nicastro, I believe last year we participated, and of course, uh, to morning. And so I would encourage um, you guys to come and let's celebrate um, a part of our culture. So again, the time will be uh, 9.30 <coughs> to 12. It's gonna be exactly um, outside of our beautiful city hall. So everybody is welcome, it's a free event. And I promised everybody that I would give them a lot of Haitian parties, so <laughs> you can look forward to get some of that. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. President. And just so we can end on a, um, uh, a, a smiling type of note, I, I do want to just say to my counsel from uh, Ward 5, I was not referring to you, counsel. I was referring to anyone. And it wasn't something I just thought of because you mentioned it tonight. I do a lot of good thinking when I'm home myself, so. Um, but I, I did not mean that for you. That's my personal opinion, so I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Council Cruz. Uh, Thank you. Uh, actually, why don't you, Council No, it's okay, go ahead. Well, I actually was gonna say we're not, uh, I hate to not end on a uh, happy note, but I did wanna ask for a moment of silence. Um, and this actually affects the Stadensky family also. Uh, Brockton lost to, a true hero, uh, Grace Holster, uh, passed away, who would be Councilor Stadensky's aunt and Mayor Stadensky's sister-in-law. But more importantly, she was the mother, she was a gold star mother and gave her son to the country back in the Vietnam conflict and Timothy Holster Playground is named for her son up on West Chestnut Street. And I thought only appropriate to have a moment of silence for, uh, for Aunt Grace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, actually, just a moment of personal privilege. Can't be the only one that doesn't speak tonight. So um, <laughs> just in reference to uh, so how we vote, I, I've heard a lot of comments from some of my colleagues and we get emails often after these meetings, but I would like to remind everybody that we often mention, ta I mention taxpayers. I'd like to remind everybody, I believe we're taxpayers as well, I know I am. So when we're voting, I'm very well thinking about con uh, consider considering my constituents as well as my family and friends. So even though we may not vote the same way, we always have um, you know, our reasons. So if anybody ever questions why I voted a certain way, I please reach out to me and ask me. It doesn't mean that I'm, not, I'm being inconsiderate of uh, spending uh, taxpayers' money because it's also our money. So um, just wanted to make note of that because I know sometimes people perceive things differently when they're watching at home. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I just have a quick, a quick announcement in terms of our last meeting in May. It will not be on a Monday, but on a Tuesday because Monday is a holiday. But remember, we're supposed to be here at 6.30, 6.30 for our photo opportunity. Makeup will be available by our uh, city clerk to pick some of us up for that photo, but uh, it's nice that we have this opportunity and, uh, and I ask you all to be here at 6.30. At the same time, I just wanted to, to, to bring something up that has been bugging me a little bit. Um, our meetings are supposed to start at seven o'clock. And a lot of people at home are sitting sometimes in front of their TV sets uh, waiting for us to start our meetings at 7 o'clock. Um, I know we're all a bunch of busy people. We have things to do. Some of us race to get here for a 7 o'clock meeting. So I think out of courtesy to the people that put us here, 
and to our fellow councils, I think we should try to make an effort to be here at 7 p.m. so we can get this meeting started. Uh, I mean, a lot of people have basically said, nowadays I have no idea when you guys are gonna start your meetings because it's 7.05, it's 7.10, it's 7 whatever. So let's just try to do the best we can. We've got the budget season coming up. Um, the books are almost ready to go. So uh, let's try to do what we can to uh, see to it that we start at 7 p.m. Council, do you want to Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I promised my mom I was going to do it. I mean, I know it's late. Uh, I would like to wish uh, every Mother's uh, a happy, belated Mother's Day, and of course to all of you folks, but because I think that without these people, we wouldn't be able to be here. So I just promised my mom I was going to announce it. So for you folks who are watching, especially those of you who are mothers, happy, belated Mother's Day. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, we actually did that at the beginning, so maybe you were a little late coming. No, I was here. <laughs> I was here, Mr. President. Mr. President, do you, do you have, as, as, as President of the Council, do you have any uh, projected dates on when we will do the budget? I was told that the books are just about ready to go. Okay. Uh, the numbers are all crunched and uh, the books are ready to go. I should be able to find that out. I have a meeting with the mayor tomorrow. Excellent. And that's something I'm gonna bring up because I wanna make sure that we get this ahead of time and we can uh, get moving with this, uh, this business. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, having absolutely no further business for the taxpayers and the residents of the city, meetings adjourned.